Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is me doing the oh the last day of March. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think. It's been a whole month. Uh, congratulate yourself if you made it this far. And if you haven't, eh, that's okay too. I mean, uh, sometimes you go at your own pace and sometimes that means a streak. Sometimes it means not a streak, but that's okay. Just do as much as you can, do as much as you want and, you know, pace yourself. Uh, it's a long, long journey. It doesn't have to be a, a sprint. It could be a slower jog, if you will. Uh, only you matter. Uh, okay, so today's poem is Split Away Largest Sum. I actually took a great nap, so hopefully today I'm a little bit better. I've been a little bit um, eh, rough around the edges lately, so um, with, uh, with implementation. So we'll see how that goes, because I feel like I've always known the um the algorithms uh or the problem solving part i'm okay uh but not the programming part which is something that for some reason used to be my or uh, it used that part is out to some reason but uh something that used to be my strength but definitely has been a little bit weaker lately okay all that being said, let's look at today's problem. Split away largest sums. So given the nums consists of non-negative integers and integer m, split the array into m non-empty contiguous subarrays. Minimize the largest sum around these m subarrays. Okay, so this is um, uh, this is what I used to call the bookshelf problem, but I think um, I, I don't know the actual name, but uh, but. Uh, yeah, but it has a couple of different ways to go about it. Um, the way that I do it, uh, and uh, this is why I actually don't like the way it is set up right now where every week has a theme week. Uh, I get what they're going for and I understand what they're trying to do. Uh, but they already have like, what's it called, explore or whatever it is. That, that is a section for this, right? The problem is that it gives you a hint, right? Like without like... For me, at least the way that I like to think about it is that the challenge is, you know, especially if you're in the beginning or, you know, uh, lead code is a little bit on the, you know, if you're, if you're doing competitive, lead code is a little bit on the simpler side or maybe not simpler side, but like more fundamentally based. So basically you have maybe like, I don't know, 10 to 15 algorithms um, and you have to try to figure out which one to use, right? And for hardware, maybe which two to use. But that said, and if you're already given a hint about what category it is, it really takes the difficulty out of it. Uh, I mean, this one, it actually didn't matter because I, I know it anyway. But um, but I think that's that's my main complaint right now about these themed weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal, obviously. It's fine. But it is something that I would... Um, anyway, it's just a comment. Um, that said, yeah, I used to... Uh, I think the first time I've seen this poem, and it's... Uh, it's been two decades, uh, is that it used to be a bookshelf problem. The way that I always think about it is um, you, you, have, uh, you have books of, there are a couple of variations of this, of course, actually, um, but you have books of certain heights. Um, in some variation, it could have a certain width as well, but, um, and you can only fit, you know, uh, a certain total width per, per, uh, per row, and then you're trying to, um, trying to see if you could fit in in a bookshelf or something like that, right? Um, and then the idea here is um, greedy and binary search is the way that I would do it. There's also a dynamic programming solution which depends on N you can do or you cannot do. Um, yeah. Uh, but given the N is a thousand, so you can actually do a dynamic programming solution. Mm. Yeah, so you can definitely do that. Your dynamic programming solution. So I, I think even though technically for this particular problem, the binary search is going to be faster because you look at the cons constraints. Actually, I missed this part. But um, so you look at the constraints and so forth. But uh, but I would al also urge to um up self using dynamic programming just so that you could practice dynamic programming especially this week where or this month maybe the last couple of weeks where everything is deemed and you don't really uh get to exercise that categorization angle if you will um i mean it's great if you're in the beginning and you you're starting out and you just want to practice the same type of problems like you know for 
you know, in the beginning, I think that the best way to learn is practice the same type of problem if you haven't expo been exposed to it and you're just doing binary search problems for the first time, for example, and you would do like 20 of them. That's fine. But for for, uh, for these things, I feel like it's a little bit awkward when, when, when half the skill, or maybe not half, but some portion of the skill is identifying what kind of problem it is, right? So, uh, so anyway, so all that being said, let's just go for it. So the idea for this one is greedy and binary search. Um, the idea, the greedy idea is that, okay, you can just guess, right? Let's say the largest sum on these subarrays, let's just guess a number X. And given that number X, how many subarrays do you come up with? Meaning, does it fit, if you will, in a bookshelf, if you want to still use the bookshelf analogy? Um, I, and if it fits, then you have a binary true. And if you don't fit, then you have a binary false. And from that, you can construct a binary search solution, right? Because now, if you look at this, I really need to get my binary search video out so I don't have to explain it, or at least I don't have to like go over the very basics. Um, but yeah, but this is going to be, if you use a small number, so what happens, right? So, and this is the way that I think about it, whether I, I, I'm going to see if this is this or this. And of course, you know, you could invert them anyway, but, and this is just false, 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 true, 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 and, and or this is the reverse. And the way that I see it is that, okay, if you have, say, um, the sum is one, what happens? Well, it just won't be possible. So you would have uh, too many subarrays in that case. Maybe I'll just set infinity. So infinity, it's going to be too much. It's going to be false. Um, and then this is true. So then we have this kind, say. And then now we can get started, right? So let's check the constraints. So each number is, is i, 10, 10 to the 6. Uh, you have at most 50 arrays. Um, so the most sum you can have is going to be, what, what is it, right? So the, the sum of the entire uh, array is going to be 10 to the 6 times 1,000, which is 10 to the 9. And 10 to the 9 over 50 is going to be, is it over 50? Mm, or over, or less than 50 maybe. So anyway, 10 to the 9 will be the upper bound. I think that's a safe upper bound. So let's get started there. So left, we, we want, the way that I always set it up is, again, being inclusive bounds because it makes sense for me a little bit more. Here we do the right, it's going to be sum of the nums, and I think that should be good. Um, yeah. And then now, you know, this is, I write this the same, same way. The reason why I like inclusive bounds is that this state, when, this, when, uh, when this statement is false, it means that left is equal to right. And when left is equal to right, that means that you're an inclusive bound of one element. And that's why I like it that way. Um, eh, your mileage may vary, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So now we go if good admit, then okay. So what is good, right? I, I name it good. You can name it something else. I think good is actually maybe a terrible name, but um, but yeah. So this is the target sum. So then we greedily. Let's see. Um. Yeah. So what what is this? What what does we want to return, right? Given um. Given the max sum of a subarray is target, how many subarrays are there, right? So that's basically the idea we want to do. Um, and is that number smaller than M? Smaller than or equal to? So that's basically what we want to do. So here, this is going to be good if the number of subarrays is going to be m or smaller, meaning that we fit. Again, you can change around how you define these things. It will just determine your answer, and that's all. Um, basically, we, um, yeah. Uh, let Let me think about it. Okay. So yeah, let's get started on the, uh, this implementation of this part. So we have count zero zero for x in uh, nums. Uh, oh. If you have a current, so then if x is greater than target, that means that it doesn't fit, then we return infinity. And if you have infinity, then the number is not smaller than m, so this is going to be false. Um, okay, otherwise, current duh, 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 add to, oh, 
x um, Uh, I guess count is always one because you have at least one thing. Okay, so if current is now greater than or uh, greater than uh, target, then current is equal to x because that means that this went over and you have to increment count. And then now at the way n, as we said, we see if count is less than or greater than m. Uh, way easy to have off by once, by the way. So definitely slow down if you uh, um, and, and really go through it. But uh, okay, so now if this is good, what happens? If this is Hmm. If this is good, right, and and it's possible that I, I messed this up to be honest. So let, let let's think about this very slowly. If this is good, what does that mean, right? If the mid is good, meaning that the, the if the sum is good, we want it to have a smaller sum, um, because. We know that mid is going to be good, so we want it to be have a smaller sum, so we set right is equal to mid. Else, left is equal to mid plus 1, because mid is too small, so we need a bigger uh, sum. So that means that we want to bound the range to the right, and also that mid is not a possi possible answer. So yeah, and then now we all we have to do is just return left. Um, I want to make sure that I phrase this one right. I think that's what I'm struggling with so hmm. yeah it should be okay let's let's give it a spin okay so that looks okay um we have to consider some edge cases of course mm, what what is a good edge case eh, okay i'm a little bit lazy so let's just give it a submit maybe i would get the oh no that is the edge case that i was worried about oh hmm for some reason, huh? Okay, that's that's uh, for some reason. I thought that the lower bound is going to be one because, yeah, I I, I just I, I didn't I, I think I saw this to be honest. Um, and this is something that you have to be really careful about. I've definitely made this mistake before. Um, the thing to notice is that because I saw this as equal to one, but I, I actually I should have looked at here and then the because you have to um consider the total range of these things. And in this case, is it is this pretty much, um, and this is zero. So we should have had, because here, um, in an inclusive bound, from one to the sum is going to be the possible answer. But actually, what we should have done is here. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I was a little bit sloppy because I didn't look at the bounds here, and this the the range is of course going to be zero. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so now this should be fixed, at least for this one. Uh, I wonder if I did the same thing. Hmm, there. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm just curious about how I did that previously. Oh, this is a different answer. Oh, I, I had an infinity. So I did this a different way, actually. Oh, hmm. Okay, I did it the cheesy binary search. I'm not going to go over that part. Uh, I, I have a video coming out that explains it. But, but I did mess this up because I, for some reason, I actually I don't know why I started at, at 1. But I didn't revisit it. That is something that it, uh, I'm. I need to remember to revisit. But uh, but yeah. But left. Basically, the answer could be zero. And if I start at one, then being an inclusive bound, zero is not a possible answer. And that's why I, you know I didn't. I messed up on that one. Um, that is, ha to be honest, that is like a uh, a big portion of my mistakes on these kind of problems is that I actually I skipped over this part because I focused on this part and then I forgot to go back and look, uh, make sure that this is right and here you can easily see that this is zero because zero times a thousand is zero or whatever um, and and the other side is bigger um, cool uh, yeah this is going to be as you know this this loop for example is going to be log of the range and the range is going to be 10 to the six times a thousand, which is ten to the nine, right? So this is going to be what, like thirties ish, thirty ish, um, and so that that's the number of iterations here, and of course the good function is going to be O of n. So this is in total, O of n log r, um, and that's how you do a binary search, and of course in space this is just O of one because we only have uh, where constants 
also yeah this is a linear thing but that's fine um cool that's all i have for this one let me know what you think uh if you have done every problem this month congratulate yourself a lot if not that's okay you know next month is uh is an uh, another uh, uh, next month is another opportunity for you to uh do well so you know that's up to you anyway that's all i have stay good stay healthy to good mental health and i'll see you later bye bye